Welcome to the Nightclub, guys. It's your host, the Night Wrencher. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys something that will hopefully change your lives when welding as a new beginner welder. These tips might not apply to a seasoned welder, but for someone that's just starting out, they might just need to hear this. The welder we're going to be using today is the Yes Welder. It is the MIG 25DS, and it's a pretty cool welder. It's kind of uh, weird to use because of the way the dials are set up. I'm normally used to using my OmniPro, but uh, I always like to try new welders to see if the settings kind of translate. And they more or less do, but there are slight differences. I might go over that in another video. The metal that we're going to be welding today is this super old and rusty piece of tailpipe out of one of my parts trucks. Right now I'm going to go ahead and cut this thing in half, prep the edges, and then we're going to get right into it. I get a lot of comments asking why I'm always welding on rusty metal, why I don't just go out and buy brand new metal and go weld with that to show my videos. And the reason for that is because a lot of us, including myself, we don't really have the money to go out and buy brand new steel every time we have a new project. Sometimes we like to recycle and reuse stuff that we have laying around. And as long as it gets the job done, who cares what it really looks like? It maybe if you're doing some sort of show quality finish or you're trying to do some sort of show car, yeah, maybe you're gonna wanna use some nicer stuff, but but honestly, for beginners, as long as the metal will hold up to whatever you needed to do, that's all you really need to worry about. Another comment that I get is why I wear these black nitro gloves. Some people call them latex gloves, plastic gloves. And the reason for that is because I like to wear these under my welding gloves because it makes it a lot easier to slip my hand in and out of the gloves. My hands are very fat. And these gloves are made for people with slightly thinner hands. So when my hand goes in there and starts sweating and everything, it gets kind of uncomfortable trying to pull it in, in and off, on and off, on and off. Especially when I'm recording videos, I need to be taking them on and off constantly. When I wear the nitro gloves, it makes it a lot easier for me to do so. Before we get into the nitty gritty, I want to show you guys another tip, and that is to use two different types of gloves. As you guys can see here, I have a nice uh, thin glove here. It's very easy to move, very light, and then I have a fat glove. The reason for wearing two different types of gloves is because the lighter glove allows me to keep the dexterity on my fingers and gives me better control of the trigger finger. It also allows my wrist to move a lot easier with this lighter glove. The thicker glove is used for the hand that is holding the material or holding the tip of the MIG gun and this protects my hands from any kind of burns. So I'm going to show you guys how that works right now. All right, so I've started up my generator. The welder is on. The helmet that I'm going to be using is a Cheapy Harbor Freight $40, $50 helmet. I have it set to darkness 11. This is an auto darkening helmet, which has settings from 9 to 13. And I have it on 11. Sometimes when the shop is really dark, you want to go ahead and lighten up your helmet. When there's a lot of light outside, you want to go ahead and darken your helmet. You kind of adjust as you go along. For those of you wondering, I'm running 030 wire and my settings are 100 at 16.5. If I was using like an ABCD type of welder, I would have it on mode B. If I was uh, wire speed from 1 to 10, I'd have it probably around like 2.5, 3.5. So imagine you guys are setting up your material. You guys are ready to weld. You have your metal all lined up. You have your MIG gun settings fairly dialed in. You go ahead and snap off the tip of the wire, get that ready to go, and you're going to go weld. You're standing right behind the MIG gun, and you bring your helmet down, and you go to weld, and now you can't see. You go to start welding, and you can't actually see what you're doing. We think of this as a MIG gun, which is like something you go ahead and stand behind, and you aim, and you shoot, and you go to weld. But you gotta think of this more like a pencil. Instead of trying to weld across like this, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and turn your material on its side. You're gonna to wanna to get the torch pointed the same direction you had before, but you wanna be looking at the weld like this. And so this is where the two different gloves come in handy, is that you're gonna be able to hold your torch with one hand, and then you're gonna be able to maneuver it with the other hand. So instead of trying to weld like this and trying to see what's happening, you're gonna to wanna to go like this so you get 100% clear view of what you're looking at. I've already sanded down the material and it's ready to go. So let's go ahead and do a slight test pass.
as you guys can see, I had no problem seeing. I was able to follow the line just fine. Let's go ahead and turn this around and try to do the opposite. So now I'm standing right here. The gun is in my way. I can't see where the tip is pointed to. So let's go ahead and try it. As you guys can see, I was still able to bridge the gap because my settings were low enough, but I just cannot see where I'm pointed to. If anything, I want to go ahead and turn the gun a little bit and then get in a little bit closer so you can see what's going on. That's where the darkening settings come in. You want to get it just light, you want to set it to the darkest setting and then back it off as you are welding because that way you can see, as soon as you can see, the, this opening, the crack, the weld that you're supposed to weld, as soon as you, that's in your sights, that's where you stop the helmet. You want to keep it as dark as you can to protect your eyes, but you need it uh, light enough so that you, know, you can see what you're actually welding. And if it's too dark, you can't see this line. What happens is when you're welding, you're creating, you're casting a shadow along this line right here, and that shadow is going to be your guide for when you start welding. If it's too dark and you can't see, you got to turn down that darkness and get it going. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to take your left hand, you're going to put it under your torch. This is going to give you your support. If you're just trying to weld like this, you tend to wiggle and vibrate a little bit, especially as a new welder. You're going to go ahead and take your left hand, you're going to go ahead and put it under this torch, and now you can just move it to wherever you need to. You can do it in sections, you can stitch weld it, you can do whatever you want. This hand is protecting this hand and it's protecting the torch. So you are 100% protected right here. There are situations where you gotta get right up on it and sometimes I've, I've had situations where I have to actually hold it like this and then well depending on how difficult it is to get in here. Right now we're out in the open so it's pretty easy. You can go ahead and get in there. Sometimes when you're trying to do very precise work, you want to get right up in there, you put it right on your index finger, you get in there, you zap it, and then you're out of there. If you're in there for too long, you're going to cook your finger, but lucky you have a little bit of time because of how thick the glove is, you have time to take the glove off, and you have no problems there. That's why I like to wear the nitrile gloves. I hope this advice helps you guys in trying to get your weld straight. If you guys don't have an auto darkening helmet, go ahead and go pick one up. But that's the best thing I can do to help you guys in terms of looking at what you're welding. I will see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher, out.